Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this video. So till now we have solved some problems related to the state space analysis and those problems we have solved with respect to the state equation and the output equation and we have uh, seen the relation and how it is obtained for different set of problems. So now we are going to do the state model representation with respect to the transfer function. Okay. That is either whether it may be open loop or closed loop. It is a uh, uh, conventional but derivation of transfer function from state model uh, we are going to see in this video and let us uh, try to analyze and see what equation we come, come at the end and what is the relationship between the transfer function and the state model. So in this video just we are going to see the derivation part that is derivation of transfer function from state model. So first consider a standard state model derived from the linear time invariant system that is LTI system. That is you write the two set of equations that one is a state state equation and the output equation. So the state equation as you know it is given by x dot of t is equal to a x of t plus b u of t. So name that as equation 1 and y, y of t that is the output equation is given as y of t is equal to c x of t plus d u of t. So name it as equation 2. Now what you do is take Laplace transform on both sides of this equation that is so here we have in with respect to time domain so that now I'm uh, putting this with respect to the S domain. So here what I'm doing is x of t x dot of t is simply the derivative right that is d by dt of x of t. So if you take the Laplace transform the t, do, t domain would be replaced by S domain and it would be getting multiplied okay so that's why this would be replaced by S into x of s then uh, a would be remaining as it is t would be replaced by s a into x of s plus b into u of s so here also y of t again since this is not any derivative this is just the variable y so it won't be having any derivative part so there won't be any multiplication of s here so directly write y of s is equal to c into x of s plus d into u of s so this is these two set of equations are after taking the laplace transform so name it as equation 3 and 4 so now note that as the system is time invariant that is it is a linear time invariant system where it is not completely dependent on time okay the time variation is not that much it is for a constant and a fixed amount of time the coefficient of matrices a b c and d that is a b c and d okay are constants okay while the definition of transfer function is based on the assumption of zero initial conditions that is for x of 0 equal to 0, what it would be like that they would be defining it. So therefore, s into x of s is equal to a into x of s plus b into u of s. So consider the first equation. So here what I have done is, I have taken this a into x of s to other side. So it would be minus a into x of s. That would be equal to b into u of s. Where s is the operator while a is matrix of order n cross n. Hence, to match the orders of two terms, so if you want to match the orders of two terms, on the left hand side, we should be multiplying S by identity matrix of the order N cross. Since you need to balance the matrix order, so what we are doing is, just uh, after multiplying uh, S, to, uh, S to the operator in the left hand side, we should be adding one identity matrix I. So here they have done it in the next step, you see here. Therefore, S into I, X of S minus a into x of s is equal to b into u of x. So here they have added one identity matrix to this term only. So here you see here in these two terms x of s is common you take it outside then we are left with s into i minus a that is equal to b into u of s. So multi now what I am doing is I am eliminating this term that is si minus a I need to eliminate. So how it can be eliminated? It can be eliminated by adding one inverse term of the same order that is multiplying both sides by si minus a inverse what we get so if we multiply both sides si minus a inverse so these two terms if they are they are inversely proportional so they would be getting cancelled out so we are left with only x of s in this side that would be equal to here also we have an si minus a inverse si minus a inverse b into u of s so this is one more set of equation which you got here so name that as equation 5 now what i am doing is I am putting 5 in equation 4. So what is the equation 4 which you have got? This is the output equation, right? y of s is equal to c into x of s plus d into u of s. In that, I am substituting the value of x of s which you have got right here. That is, y of s would be now equal to c into 
x of s value you put it that is si minus a inverse b into u of s plus d into u of s so here you see here this is one term and this is one term in these two terms u of s is common take it outside so what is left here that is final output equation y of s would be equal to c into si minus a inverse into b plus d into u of s so hence the transfer function can be this is the output right and this is the input matrix u of s so transfer function is simply output by input right so what i'm doing is i'm taking this u of s to other side so that's why it would be y of s divided by u of s so y of s divided by u of s would be equal to c into si minus a inverse into b plus t and we know that this si minus a inverse has one set of formula if, if you have studied the matrix thoroughly you should be knowing that any matrix inverse would be equal to adjoint of that matrix divided by determinant of that matrix right so that's why here si minus a inverse would be equal to adjoint of si minus a divided by determinant of si minus a so what is adjoint and what is determinant that we are going to see while solving the problem so now what i am doing is i am substituting the value of si minus a inverse in this equation and this is the final equation which we have got for the transfer function that is y of s divided by u of s that is c into adjoint of si minus a into b divided by determinant of si minus a plus d so with this relation we come to know that transfer function y of s is completely dependent on the input matrix u of s with respect to the identity matrix provided to the s domain conversion when we are converting the time domain to s domain we should be having a factor of identity matrix if you want to balance between the input and output to get the final transfer function so this is the derivation part so this is the formula for transfer function so if you want to convert the transfer function from state model we should be using this formula so that we are going to see in the upcoming problems which you are going to solve in the upcoming videos so stay tuned for that so this was the derivation part guys hope you understood it so you can expect this question also for the exam so that's why i thought of doing it so please please uh, see the steps uh, involved in this notes so this notes uh, i'm going to put it in the video's description go and access it uh, it's a very good notes uh, five fifth model all the concepts are covered with respect to state space analysis and many problems are also mentioned here Okay, go through it and access it and study this derivation guys very important so that's all for the video guys we'll see you in the upcoming videos with many more problems thank you